Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to the Secret Services Celebrity Psychic Readings. I'm going to be your psychic reader for today, Quintari Shakir. Please go to www.blackspectrumnetwork.com and purchase a private psychic reading. Also go to quintarius.com to purchase a private psychic reading. Please go to my Patreon account, patreon.com forward slash blackspectrumnetwork. This is where you can get psychic readings um, a week in advance. Right now there are about two or three psychic readings on the Patreon account that are not posted to this YouTube and there will be more. So, but make sure that you stay you stay tuned in on this this particular YouTube account every Tuesday and Friday at 12 p.m. there will be a new psychic reading. All right. So, um you know me, it's uh call me Psychic DJ Messi. Um, we're going to be doing a reading on Pusha T. All right, so overall, uh, the reading, um, so push the T. Um, actually, let me draw. I think I'm going to need two more cards to really feel him out. Um, this is Spirit Sammy. All right, so um, overall, this reading with push the T, um, let's just, let me just, let's see. Where do I begin with these cards to describe him the most um, in the way that the cards are related? Okay, so I'll just, I'll read it this way. So the first card that's standing out to me is this card, the Femme Fatale card. Um, um, Pusha T is a woman eater. Pusha T uh, also may have. Um, they're saying that he has <clears throat> he has energy that is charming to women, but also his energy is charming to men as well. I think that he has an allure. Um, a sexual allure that appeals to both men and women, kind of like a prince sort of energy about him. But they're definitely saying that um, he he he's very sensual with himself and sensual with money, sensual with power. And women like that. And I think that men are attracted to that as well. Um, but I'm definitely getting this energy where he where they're. You know, there are men and women attracted to him. I'm not exactly sure if he himself would be bisexual, but I do get an energy where um, it's kind of, uh, it's like an androgynous energy about him. Um, the next card is speaking about Pusha T being a bully. Pusha T is someone that, um, Pusha T is someone, he, he, was, he was the guy that in high school that always had a joke just in case. He always was ready to, uh, he, he had already known something about you to use against you just in case you ever um, did something to him. Pusha T ha has this really, really deep fear that people are against him. He's very suspicious of um, the people that have been around him. I'm hearing that in his childhood, um, he was, you know, he did have a close relationship. Like, his family, they, they are like... Um, they're all uh, close in the sense of like how people in the church are close. You know, there might be a lot of infighting, but there isn't a lot of um, family business that um, gets out into the public. And so I'm hearing that um, his relationship, like his 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 closeness to his family leads him to believe that if you aren't blood, you aren't cool and I have to watch out for you. Um this particular this particular card is saying that Pusha T has a huge ego. Um, he he has this his inflated sense of self contributes to um, why his music has the impact that it does. But it's also speaking about Pusha T feeling like he feels like he's always been. A, he's like I hear him as like I'm a community leader, bitch. Um, he, <laughs> and I I that's how I hear it. And he he feels that everything that he's done has helped to. To either better himself, him, his family, or the community. He's like, I haven't hurt anyone with the things that I've done. And um, his career 
it is his um his uh it, it's this fervent passion to achieve these grandiose career goals um and his inflated belief in himself that has helped him to achieve the success he has and reach the people that he has so it's, it's kind of like yeah you might not have liked that i stole your homeboy skates but i also uh and and that i sold these drugs but i also um i also um you know paid for this young girl's prom you know did you know about that sort of thing um they're also saying that um push a t is someone that he likes to he likes for people to always see him as the underdog always see him as the victim i always need to be seen as right this person hit me first so i did this this person did this to me so i did this if if broad never came at me like that i wouldn't have had to do this you forced my hand when you forced my hand when you meddled in my affairs he's that sort of guy he's someone that you don't want to trigger because when he feels when he feels threatened or disrespected he has all of his weapons out ready to attack you. They're also saying that um, he he goes above and beyond in his, whether it's his rap battles, his music, or in his community service, simply because he feels that he's a superhuman person that can defy all odds. And, and none of these goals or challenges against uh, that are, none of these goals or challenges that um, stand in his way are, are too big for him to overcome. Pusha T is, uh, I wouldn't exactly say that he's a liberator with the people that he's around, but he is liberated within himself. Pusha T, it, you can't, you can't tell him negative things about himself. You can't control his way of thinking. You can't get into his head. If Pusha T were to go to jail, he would run the jail. And they're saying that, um, Pusha T is somebody that, you know, if you deal with him in his circle, you're always around his energy. You can, he's, he's like, you know, I'll be nice to you as long as you don't disrespect me. Once you disrespect me, it's over, son. And that's how I hear it. And so for Pusha T, he, he, um, Pusha T is just, he's not, he doesn't, he never thinks about boundaries. He doesn't think about limits. You can't tell him no. You can't tell him anything is impossible. You know, um. Once you once you tell him about a physical limit that um, that a physical limit that's restricting him, he his imagination thinks beyond that limit and he tries to make that he tries to make that um, that possibility that he's imagined a reality. All right, so they're saying that Pusha T is someone that has it as a child. He you know grew up poor. He's had this survivalist mentality. Um, and because he's lived in an economically deprived community, um, he's internalized a lot of those those values and, and feeling as though that there is not enough money. There's always a hustle. I've always got to collect, collect, collect. Always, I've just got to harness more money. So he he doesn't he's not exactly greedy, but he always he feels like he has a poverty mindset where he feels like there's a lack always around him and that whether there's a lack of money or there's a lack of integrity um, within the people that he deals with he feels he he feels like it's like he lives in a glass house he has this very lofty sense of himself and then he feels that other people are incomplete, but his loftiness keeps him from saying that he's incomplete. Therefore, he hangs out with people that are dependent on him. But he thinks he doesn't realize that just as much as they are dependent on him, he's dependent on them. So in order for him to maintain this loftiness, you need someone that feels and believes, you know, feels and believes these false truths that he is above them. Finally, they're saying that um, he's a great poet. He's a great lyricist. Spirit is saying that his, they're just like, you know, we gave him some of, you know, we gave him some of the best of our vocabulary. We've taught him, you know, the, uh, they're like, you know, as, as, as far as his liturgical skills, we've given him the best. He's done this before. He's written plays in past lifetimes. Um, but as you can see with this card, um, the bottom of the card is definitely very uh, relevant to uh, what's going on. I don't know if you all are going to be able to read that. Uh, let me see if I can get this to focus right here. Let's see. All right. Um, is this going to focus? 
on this card? No? I don't know, but whatever. I don't know if you all can see it, but just assuming that you all can, you all, okay, so I wasted uh, like 30 seconds. Anyway, so the bottom of the card says that you can turn your lyrical gifts uh, to uh, negative efforts or destructive efforts. So obviously we're going to be getting into the Drake and Pusha T beef. All right, so, but before I, DJ Psychic Messy, get into this beef, we're going to talk about... Pusha T's childhood, his family, his brother, did he sell all those drugs? You know, we're really going to get into a little bit of Pusha T's life. Alright, so for this, um, so I guess what you can take from the first part of that segment is that um, Pusha T is, um, I guess you can say Pusha T's like a, he's a Regina George. He's a main girl. Um... He's a he's very much you can't sit with us. Uh, okay. I don't know why I put pulled that card out. Whatever. And because I didn't even ask a question. I'm sitting here like, why is that card out? Alright, so um Pusha T's childhood. Alright, so first I want to know about Pusha T's childhood. Um Spirit is saying very early. Spirit is saying very early on in his lifetime, Pusha T got involved in in drugs. I'm hearing that he started helping like uncles or older men, like men in the community. It was like a man in the family, and then his he had connections within the local neighborhood. And it's like as a young, like very at a young age, he got involved in the drug game. And he was using his drug money, you know, to support his family. They're also saying that he got involved. He, uh, uh, there were a lot of police encounters, a lot of, pol uh, a lot of police run-ins. He just had a lot of run-ins the, with the law at that age. And they're saying that, um, I'm also hearing that he started to learn about the, uh, the corruptness of the police department. It's almost like wherever he lived, the police department was um, also helping to circulate drugs into their community and there was like one police officer that he you know that was um kind of like an informant to the to the community not an informant for the police officers but it was a police officer that was in you know in, that was someone from the drug community that infiltrated the i think the police community is a drug community so let me be specific there was someone that that was someone from the urban the, the community that he lived in that infiltrated the police community and would come back to the and would come back to this community that Pusha T was in to give and to give them information. All right, and I'm hearing that Pusha T was connected to this person in some way. All right, so they're also saying that Pusha T spent a lot of like he spent a lot of time like caring for like younger siblings. Looking after them, becoming their father figure, and I'm also hearing that there's a mother that he had to take care of as well. And this woman may not have just been; she may not have just been able to readily take care of herself either because she couldn't physically move her body, or because she could like her men like mentally she just couldn't give to her children. Like mentally, mentally she was she. Like she was maybe perhaps collecting a check possibly. Um, so what they're saying, um, what else they're saying is that um, he had a, I think he had a girlfriend or a, or a girl that was just down for him. A young girl that he really cared about at the time. And I think that he and this girl, um, I'm definitely thinking that he and this girl were close. They were having sex with each other, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm hearing like there was a baby. Like, there was this idea that he had a baby by her, or maybe he does have a child by this woman. Um, but I am hearing that there is, um, uh, in his teenage years, he was having a lot of sex with a young girl. She ended up pregnant, and I'm not exactly sure if that baby was his, but I do hear that around 14, 15, that's when he started to get extremely successful, um, extremely successful with, um, Turning over these, you know, turning over, you know, these huge profits. So, they're saying, because 
Okay, so I don't know much about Pusha T, but I do know that somebody asked me about a brother. And now the brother is coming up. I'm seeing where... I'm seeing his mom. I don't think it was... A, I don't even think it was physical or... I, I don't think it was a physical disability. I think her th their mom was emotionally... Uh, emotionally disturbed. Kind of like... She may have been on drugs herself. And there was some physical abuse that she had um, endured to a degree. And this kind of, you know, made her go inward with her emotions so she would have children but wasn't present enough to take care of them. And doing a lot of her, like, uh, basically a lot of emotional sulking that was supposed to be emotional healing. And I'm saying he and his brother, you know, leaving the house a lot, um... I think this brother may be, I'm not, well, I'm not sure if this brother is older or younger, but I think that this brother is bigger than he is, um, and I think that if he, whether, whether or not he's older or not, his brother is not as smart as he is, um, and his brother's very bullheaded and arrogant. His brother thinks that he's smarter than Pusha T, and Pusha T is like the... I would definitely say his his brothers are more. Neither one of them are very sensitive, but Pusha T's the more, um, the more compassionate of the two. Um, I'm saying that he and his brother, they did a lot. They they moved a lot of weight together. Um, them and two other guys that were part of the team. Um, it's kind of like younger guys that were in the circle. And maybe they all produce music together or something. And Spirit is saying that... Spirit is saying that what may, what has made Pusha T a successful drug dealer was that he, he drug dealt in moderation. And he did it in a very inconspicuous way. Um, he was... He had financial goals that he needed to meet, but he 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 never he never allowed for drug dealing to consume a lot of his time. He felt that the he was like he this is what I hear him saying: the more that I'm on the streets, the more likely that I am to um, the more the the more that I'm on the streets, the more likely I am to get caught. And he's like, you know, I don't mind getting caught in my house not doing nothing. And they, you know, they have a harder time pinning things on me. But if I'm caught with possession, it's over. So I'm saying it as there were some deals that he would he would weigh the opportunity of. He's like, you know, I can't move, you know, I'm not moving no weight that's not gonna make me at least, you know, twelve, thirteen hundred, you know, today. I can't do, you know, the you know, two, three hundred dollars here and there. So it's not like he spent every single day moving this amount of weight. It's just he already dealt with large quantities, large scale purchases, and that's all that he did until those purchases became more frequent. And that was his mode of operating. And that helped him to become the King of Pentacles, which would be this um, financially support, this very wealthy, financially supported businessman. It, it, you know, he started to call the shots and he eventually started to call the shots and had people working for him. Um, like 1920-ish. Um, and I'm hearing that maybe like 22, 23 is when he starts to start getting out of all that. Alright, um, now if those ages were off, then I'm talking about spiritual ages. And, um, if those, if, if that didn't make any sense, I have no problem being wrong. Um, please tell me if I'm correct or if I'm not. But we're about to get into, um, a couple of other questions. Um, so now we want to talk about his relationship with his brother No Malice. I think that's his brother No Malice. And we're going to talk about his finances. Spirit is saying that they are, Spirit is saying that their relationship has, um, they're trying to refresh um, the terms and conditions of their relationship 
they had there was a there was a lot of infighting, um, a lot of it being about money, a lot of it being about um, his brother wanting to be more visible in Pusha T's career and feeling old things. And they're describing his brother as the Queen of Swords, and um, for me, what this card reads as is that you know he's his brother is um, ultra intellectual, but he's he's someone that plots um, a long run, a long term game. He plots for long term gain, and that long term, like when when he gets what he wants, he gets the entire pie, and everyone else might starve. Um, because I see his brother wanting the world at his fingertips, but his brother doesn't, his brother just holds on to so much emotional baggage in this jealousy of Pusha T that he's like, it's, it's like that. They're, they're trying to refresh the relationship. They've always been competitive with each other, but when this competitiveness has, has turned into almost wanting revenge, or hating the other person because of their their success. Um, Spirit is saying that for Pusha T, they're saying that for Pusha T, Pusha T's kind of like, look, man, um, we can we can squash this. You know, I got young. Like he's like, I'm trying to raise. He's like, I'm trying to raise up the young brothers, and we, you know, we could do more together. You know. And I'm saying that they're they're taking each other in doses, but this brother is still this brother is still um, hurt, and his hurt is manifesting as um is is a false sense of nonchalance. Like, oh, I don't care, I'm over it. I don't care, I'm over it. That's how I hear it. Um, as of now, I think that Pusha T is thinking about working with No Malice on some songs. Um, the ancestors have been telling them to work together. The ancestors are like, look, we don't care. Put all this shit aside. Um and continue doing this work that you like he and his brother are supposed like in many lifetimes they've worked together they've been close with each other they've fallen out in other lifetimes and in this one it's like i'm hearing it almost as is like there's a lot of just it it bo it boils down to who got who got more respect from the rap community and from the drug community who built who up and push a T not saying, you know, just thank you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for help building me. Thank you for giving something to my business. No one else could. Thank you for giving me lyrics that sometimes other people didn't. Thank you for believing in me when other people wouldn't. That's all his brother needs to hear. Um, His brother's very, very sexual, and he, his brother's very, I mean, sexual to the point that, like, he uses sex, um, to just deal with his problems, and I think that Pusha T just doesn't, Pusha T doesn't operate that way. I'm hearing that Pusha T deals with his, he deals with his anger, like, through, you know, liquor, you know, like, just, but he doesn't, he's not an alcoholic, it's like liquor, drugs, you know, just regular things, I might have a drink every once in a while, but this brother is hypersexual and his brother it's like if his his is here's the thing his brother is sexually active to the degree that um I think that he I just think his hormones and just basically celibacy um, for, you know, if the best way that I can explain it is this way. I'm stumbling over my words, but let me explain it like this. Um, his brother is very sexual and his brother has had sex with a lot of people and his brother, um, I think his brother is just trying to, you know, decipher between his thoughts and the thoughts of other people because this unprotected sex has, you know, attracted different 
spirits, and I think that um, his uh, Normalis is a slave to his, his his sexual feelings. Therefore, he doesn't know how to be disciplined in other areas and control his anger. Um, so if you all want more information about celibacy, here's this book called The Weight by Megan Good and Devon Franklin. I have been reading this. It's a phenomenal book. Um, please make sure to check it out. Um, so, all right, anyway, so that's what I see for the brother. It's like their relationship is, they're rehabilitating um, between themselves. So I'm going to see if I can figure out where the trajectory of their relationship is going. Pusha T, you are a little thotty. Not a Pusha T, but Pusha T's brother, you a little thotty. You out here getting it like that? Hey, but get it in, man. Get it in. Get in the end. You got one life to live, right? Okay. All right, so um, where is their relationship headed? All spirit is saying is all spirit is saying right now is that they are about to try to do some work together. Um, the project will be released, but it could start more drama between them if it could start more drama between them if no malice starts to feel. Like his because he hasn't dealt with these old uh, these uh, these feelings that have uh, accumulated over you know like 10, 15 years. If he doesn't deal with that, it's going to resurface and and it's going to start their their uh, beef again. Um, anyway, so what is his uh, what is Pusha T's issue with Drake? Pusha T feels like Drake stepped into territory. Like he feels like Drake stepped into territory that he wasn't, he wasn't equipped to to really be in. It's kind of like Pusha T has this idea that he's like, you know, Drake is a really good, you know, musician. He's an artist, but I'm from the streets, which is different. So for him to do these disrespectful things to me, it's kind of like you're. You're an idiot. How dare you? It's 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 like Dr Pusha T sees it as, you know, Drake is a rapper. Drake is a man who raps. You know, I'm a dude who's about the life and Drake has now stepped into my territory. If he didn't have this money system around him, you know, he could definitely get handled a lot more. So Pusha T feels disrespected by Drake um, in, in that way. And um, he also feels like he I, he feels like this he feels almost like Drake mm. okay Pusha T feels like he slept in the bed with the, with the enemy it's like Pusha T's like oh I heard things about Drake I heard he could be catty he could be messy he could be backstabbing. And, um, you know, I, I dealt with him, worked with him, and I thought I could fuck with him from a distance. But here's the thing. Pusha T's like, I'm from the streets. And he sized up Drake. And the thing is, is that Pusha T's like, oh, well, you know, just just with anybody, I already collect my info on everybody. You know, I get my info on them just in case they come for me. And he's like, he, he, he's like, I have a, I have a Hail Mary in my back pocket with Drake. But I don't see it as, I think upon them first meeting, he felt that Drake was cool. And he, and this is the thing, Drake is not very transparent, so it can be hard to tell what his motives are. You have to look at his actions because he can be very, very friendly in your face. And so Pusha T could read Drake. Um, he could read that Drake was inauthentic, but he couldn't see Drake's long range plan. Um, here's the thing. I think Pusha T came to Drake for assistance. There was um, this spider web is letting me know that there was a contract that appeared like the spider spider webs for me can either be a layer or they can be a den. It can be a layer where you get eaten or a den where you rest. 
It depends if you're the, the prey or the predator. And so Drake's contracts are spiderwebs. You don't know if you're the prey or the predator. And I think Push T found out that he, he wasn't the predator. But in this falling out, he's now become Drake's prey. Simply by working with him to some degree or something. I don't know. And this devil card is just saying that things are just over. It's like, glove, you know, gloves are off. I see what's up. I see how you are. And what Drake did struck a, struck a nerve with him. See, Pusha T has this inner child that gets wounded when um, he feels his masculinity is being disrespected. And so he's also, he, Pusha T is also very, he has a strong, like, like Evelyn Lozada, he has this very strong, you know, ethical, personal, it's a personalized ethical code. It's like, you don't do this. You know, where I'm from, this is how you handle this. What, what you do is this is how you speak to me, sort of thing. All right, um. Spirit is saying that as long as this beef goes on, Pusha T is going to be successful. Um, they're saying that Pusha T can hold his own, actually. They're saying that he's such a successful lyricist um, that his his words will always shape, you know, the community. It's like they're saying that Drake's charisma, um, Drake's char charisma is a monster. But they're saying that um, within, you know, in the midst of all this hoopla blah, blah. Um, they're like, you know, Pusha T really stands very sturdy with his lyricism and, and his, poet, his, his poetry skills. They're saying that some of the things that he's, some of, if this beef keeps going on, uh, Pusha T could end up with, you know, some very popular catchphrases getting, you know, used in shows. Um, if, if this, if this continues. Um... Spirit is saying that Pusha T needs to play his card. Pusha T needs to play his cards right because this is this beef has revived his career beyond um, his music. It's like the spirit is like, look, if, if it weren't for this beef, there wouldn't be such a, a, a grand renewed interest in you. It's like a lot of people didn't know that he was coming out with a lot of his fans actually didn't know that he was coming out with an album. And now his fans actually know that he's coming out with an album. Spirit is saying that Spirit is his more well, Spirit is saying that he needs to just be really careful in how he proceeds forward with Drake. They're like, yes, you are um, capable of holding your own, and when people look back on this, they will be able to appreciate your. Um, they will be able to appreciate your 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 ability to. To resist the barrage of of, of 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 shady attacks that Drake is going to launch at you, and for you to to survive through it, um, but what could be missed is people are just waiting for your responses, and they are not exactly waiting to see your music videos. They're not waiting for your tour. Much rather, they're just trying to see you know how hard you swing. They're not trying to you know. They're trying to see how hard you swing in the ring, but they're not trying to see you perform on the stage. It's just like, be very careful. Tread lightly. Spirit is saying that if Pusha T, like Drake is, go, I think Drake is going to, um, put, Pusha T just needs to, to not allow for Drake to strike him, his wounds. So Drake, if Drake starts launching attacks against his family, um, it's like Pusha T doesn't have. They're saying like Pusha T has soft spots for family. Pusha T has soft spots for his credibility. So if Drake questions his credibility or starts um, being uh, defam, uh, starts making defamatory remarks towards his family, then it's like that's going to send Pusha T over the edge emotionally, and he will start to lose focus of of. Of, of using this disc to continue promoting the album. That's what's being missed. It's like there's a promotion of the album that also needs to be uh, woven into woven into these interviews. E each and every time you respond to a question, it's like it needs to be about promoting the album or at least releasing an added single that's 
about Drake or having some exclusive content about this particular beef. They're saying that there is Spirit is saying like there's a lot of opportunity for him to monopolize financially from this. They don't really care about the, the going back and forth and, and exactly who's going to win. They're just like, look, you need money. Um, some money right now. As a matter of fact, we were supposed to do a reading on his finances. So I need to look at um, Pusha T's finances. All right, push it to you in his finances. They're saying that Pusha T has actually been living very frugally for a while. Um, it's kind of like, you know, he hasn't been having, he hasn't been eating lavish dinners. I mean, it's like, you know, sometimes he eats at home and he cooks. And, you know, he's lives a, um, a lower middle, he's lived a lower middle class lifestyle. Not like he's broke or anything, but he's not... He's not driving a, a Bugatti or a Maserati, you know. They're like, you know, he, he lives a very modest lifestyle financially. And they're saying that he needs to just make sure that, you know, he has something saved over. Um, because that he has something saved um, in case of emergency. They're like, push the T, you still need an emergency. Like, everyone needs an emergency fund. But they're like, push the T, you need an emergency fund, okay. They're like. You know, he gets taken care of sometimes by, you know, his friends. It's like he's 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 not afraid to, you know, have an industry friend that, you know, takes him out on a nice trip or a nice vacation. He, he enjoys those things. But can he do it himself? You know, maybe, you know, two or three times a year. Um, but they're like, you know, he doesn't have such a huge demand around his name. Um, and, um, you know, they're just like, you know... Be mindful, you know, focus on the money. Uh, out of all this, they are saying that he's going to have an influx of about, you know, a good two, three hundred thousand dollars coming to him this year, you know, so, um, you know, through the album. It's like, you know, different appearances at places to tour some of his music, you know, maybe an award show appearance or something. This is going to be good for him. I do see him making more money as the year progresses. But spirit is like for what where he is right now financially, just don't be too arrogant. Um, and as he as he gets more money, they're just saying don't allow. They're just like don't let these hoes distract you. You know, be real careful um, because you can still have kids, and the wrong false move you could end up. You know, they're just like the wrong move you could end up losing a lot of the money that you've started to accumulate. You know. They're just like, just be, you know, just be careful all the way around. Um, and they're saying like, hoes, no, no age. That's how I hear it. His spirit guys are very explicit. Like, hoes, no, no age. Um, and, and just, one second. I'm in his finances. Um, if there's a woman in his life. I think Pusha T might have a woman in his life he's dating, and I think that they might um, they might um, break up, or he's married and they might break up, or he's going to, or he's, or he's thinking about getting married to her. Um, is he thinking about getting married to this woman? He's contemplating leaving this relationship. He's contemplating cutting cutting this woman off. Because they are not good for each other. Um, it's like this this money has started to bring him a renewed sense of clarity about a relationship with some woman. Alright. Alright, so um, we want to know, um, will Pusha T regret airing out Drake's dirty laundry? Um, was this a bad move for his career and Pusha T's relationship with Kanye? And then we end the reading there. If you've been enjoying this reading, please leave me a comment and just say, hey, I've been enjoying this reading. All right, so.
So, um, will he regret airing out dirty Drake's dirty laundry? No. They're saying that actually um, he's gotten plenty more opp financial opportunities. It's like th th there's a lot to balance. See, Pusha T got into this Drake beef and now he has a second project to maintain. So Spirit is like, Spirit is saying, you know, you wanted, you wanted money, you wanted fame, and here we're going to bring it to you. And they're, they're like, bravo, congratulations for taking this opportunity. There's no, they're like, there's no regrets. He shouldn't, they're, they're even telling it to me now, to me now like this. They're like, regrets? He should never have any regrets. He chose this industry. They love what he's doing. They love the distance. They love, they're like, they, they're like, uh, we love the cheese made. We want more. And so, I, it's just this set, it's just like he has to, he, he was already, Spirit was like, you know, he could take a, in a, in a very aggressive approach to promoting this album. It was like they already had a plan in place, a good, you know, a good solid marketing strategy to keep his, his sound in rotation and on the radio. Because I'm hearing, I don't know why I'm hearing like a track with the Migos or something. Anyway, but they are saying that, um, they are saying that since this beef has happened, more money has rolled in and now he just has to manage it better. It's like he can't devote too much attention to the beef or else he'll neglect the music. Too much attention to the music, he neglects the beef. And he needs both of those to help to uh, recycle the interest in his career. Um, and they're saying that... Um, they're saying that there's a man who's been very supportive of him um, along this journey, not just toward like helping him to produce the music, but uh, helping him to produce the music, promote the music, and also really helping him to maneuver through this beef as well, giving him like tips about how social media responds and the 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 most um, provocative ways to to handle an interview and the things to say, how he should conduct himself. I'm not hearing this it's like a publicist giving him this. It's a it's a it's a male rapper. Um, anyway, um, was his ancestors don't think that's a bad move for his career. Um, he doesn't regret airing out the dirty laundry, so I don't even uh, that question got knocked out uh, with those cards. So his relationship with Kanye West. Spirit is saying, "Be Spirit is telling him that he." I think Kanye West is, was the one that was giving him the information. Is giving him the information about how to maneuver through this diss, in uh, this diss, this diss uh, storyline. Let's just call it a storyline. This is what it is. They're saying that Kanye is incredibly analytical. They're like Kanye's very. Um, persuasive and Pusha T looks at Kanye as a genius slash mentor and Spirit is saying that Kanye could Kanye is getting is going to get Pusha T into trouble if Pusha T continues to follow his guidance without uh, consulting his um, his own intuition it's like Pusha T's loftiness um, is eliminated when he's around Kanye. He just listens and he turns into like this kid that sits and he's just like, yeah, man, yeah, 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 that's great, that's great. You, yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. Um, they're saying that, um, you know, they're like, you know, even though Kanye is intelligent and, you know, he is witty, they're also just like, you know, a healthy distance between you two would be good. Um, and, and if, if you all had, you know, if he kept a healthy distance, he'd be able to see more of the truth about why it is that Kanye wants him to, you know, approach reviving his career in this way and shaking things up. They're like, follow Kanye's advice, but only, you know, only, uh, it, it's like you, you need only a little bit of it, a little bit of his advice. It's like rattlesnake snake poison. A little bit of rattlesnake poison can be. Um, antidote, but too much is, is just pure venom. And they're just saying be careful with Kanye. Um, as far as their relationship goes, they're saying be careful with Kanye because you don't know if you're in his land or you're, you're, you're in his lair or his den. His land. Blah. Sorry, getting tongue tied. How does he feel? How does he, how's their relationship? Um, their relationship is one in which they make a lot of money together. 
Um, and that's why they want to, and Kanye really respects him. Um, they're saying that, um, they're saying that neither of them, neither, they, they don't really bump heads because both of them are extremely stubborn, but, um, and that helps them to get along in this very strange way. It's like, um, push a t Pusha T is Kanye, Kanye's Pusha T, and they both feed from each other's energy. But um, Pusha T is never avoidant of the advice that Kanye West has to give to him. Um, and I'm trying to see, is there any other information that I can pick up from these cards? And I'm not really hearing that there's any other information that I'm picking up from the cards. All right, so with that being said, we want to know last um, what is coming for Pusha T's career. They're saying that Pusha T is going to be coming into large sums of money that he's not going to, he, he knows how to manage, but he doesn't, he's not ready to, they're just like, he needs to save all of his money. They're like, save all of your money because you don't, you don't know when, you don't know how to um, bring longevity to this new revival of your career and to be very careful. They're also saying be careful with um, you know, just with just their ego, they're like women are gonna be after you again. You you you're not ugly. You're gonna be attractive to women again, and you know just just be careful. You don't want to have a baby by someone that's you know t t ten to fifteen years younger than you. Um, what else is coming for his career? They're just it's the same information again. They're like they're just saying go for it. Work with strategic teams uh, that work. Like go for it. Make strategic decisions. Work with people that um, he's like work. Their spirits are saying work with work with younger artists and try to refrain from working with artists that are you know within your generation because that's not going to um, that that's going to. They're just saying like work with artists that are a part of your uh, that are not a part of your generation so that you can continue this continue bringing this renewed interest in you. They're saying to. You know, just be very careful with every step that you take. This is a uh, this is a new journey for you. It could either be, um, you know, you could either be falling, you know, into a lot of success or just falling to your doom. And um, finally, they're just saying they're saying to him that uh, the uh, the best the best defense is to have a great offense. So they're like, you know, continue collecting intel on the people that you work with. Um, always have a just in case plan, um, and, and 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 spirit is like you know as long as he, as long as he can keep focused on the money and 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 think about finding the opportunity in the chaos, you know finding out how to monopolize opportunities within the chaos, he'll be just fine. All right, so that's been my reading for Pusha T. I want to thank you all for tuning in to Black Spectrum Network. Please uh, sign up for my Patreon account where for just $2, you can see uh, other psychic readings like a psychic reading on Michael B. Jordan, a psychic reading on Karuchi, a psychic reading on LeBron James. Those are all available right now on the Patreon account. And guess what? Even more are going to be available on this uh, on that account tomorrow. All right. Uh, it's your boy Psychic DJ Messy, otherwise known as Q, the creator. This was my messy reading about Pusha T. I'm out. Uh, go to www.blackspectrumnetwork.com. Okay, now, really, I'm out. Bye. I just want to fly away. First place out of space.